Okay, so about two-thirds of you say, sure, because the top is the gravitational torque and the bottom is the moment of inertia. So let's go see if that works out to be correct. So <clears throat> how many different, well, how many different isolation diagrams am I going to need for this? Three. Three, all right. So let me do the easy ones first. So I have mass, what is it, M1? Can I assume that the tension is everywhere the same in the string? Well, I mean, can I assume legitimately? <laughs> let, me, let me hedge my bets and we'll see if we can make the argument. I'm just going to call T1 and T2 in case. So T1 and we have gravity, M1, G, and I'm going to need maybe a coordinate for this. So how about if I pick that way for X1? Okay, so I'll, I'll measure from its initial position and I'm going to treat down as positive for mass M1 since M1 is bigger than M2. So I'm expecting it to go that way. M2. looks a whole lot alike, except that if M1 goes down, I have to expect, unless the string is stretching, that M2 is going to be going up. So I'm going to use X2 being positive up to be consistent. And one more. Now I need to isolate anything else. Is there friction? No, frictionless axle. OK, what direction am I going to pick as positive for rotation to be consistent, clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, right? If, if this one goes down, it's going to turn that away. So I'm going to take that as positive for theta. Why is there a normal force? Yeah, if there weren't, the net force would definitely be down and it will fall. It didn't fall. It didn't fall? Inconceivable. All right, fine. So, <clears throat> all right, let's start here and get an equation of motion. So, A is defined positive down. So, I have M1G minus T1 is equal to M1X1 double dot. That's equation one. Woohoo. Okay, we're going to have to keep track of equations and unknowns very efficiently. Equation two, same story over there, except now positive is up. So I get T2 minus M2G is equal to M2 X2 double dot. Maybe I better keep a list of unknowns, right? OK, so far, what do I have? T1, T2, X1, X2. I got two equations and four unknowns not looking good so far. What else? Now I need to get an equation from here, which is that the sum of the torques sum of the torques is equal to I times the angular acceleration. Okay, so sum of the torques, that would be T1 times R. Is it big R? Should be big R, yes. Minus T2 big R. Any other torques about there? 
I'm using the axle so I get rid of the other junk, okay, and it spins about there. This must be equal to one half mass of the pulley radius squared, that's the moment of inertia, times theta double dot. Okay, any new unknowns? Theta double dot, oh crap. All right, this is equation three. How am I going to get rid of some of these unknowns? If the string doesn't stretch, what do you know about x1 double dot compared to x2 double dot? They have to be the same because for any little distance that one moves down, two moves up the same amount. So all changes to one have to be equal to the other. So a fourth equation would be that dx1 must be equal to dx2 and therefore x1 double dot is equal to x2 double dot. Okay, that's four. One more and we're golden. Coco, where am I going to get one more? I could ask somebody else, right. Skillfully played, Coco. Yeah. Um, I already, already did that over here. You mean for this? But is it, is it accelerating anyway? No, its center is sort of stuck. Yes. He, he claims, actually he opines, that dx1 would be equal to r times d theta. That is, if the string doesn't slip, around the pulley, then as this moves down, it has to drag the circumference of the wheel around the same amount as the mass moved down. So we're good. We have all the equations we need. It's just a matter of tidying up the algebra. So we'll do that real quick. So let's see. I'm going to add equations one and two. to get, let's see, m1 minus m2 times g plus t2 minus t1 is equal to m1 plus m2. And since both x double dots are the same, I'm going to drop the subscript. Okay, so that's just from adding. And that's supposed to make me see something like, oh, I don't know, 3. See, T1 minus T2 is there. So I can get rid of the tensions. This, this thing is, implies if I divide out one factor of R, T1 minus T2 is equal to 1 half mpr theta double dot. So let me stuff that in. So I have now m1 minus m2 g plus, oh wait, it's even better if I throw it to the other side because then I don't have the minus sign. So it'll be t1 minus t2 over there. So I'm going to put in 1 half mpr theta double dot plus m1 m2 x double dot. Now, I can use the fifth equation that relates translation and rotation to get rid of the x double dot. So I have now m1 minus m2 g is equal to 1 half mpr theta double dot plus the sum of the masses m1 plus m2 r theta double dot. And therefore, the angular acceleration 
will be equal to m1 minus m2 g, that's the numerator, divided by 1 half mp plus m1 plus m2 multiplying r. Let's check dimensions. Are dimensions happy? G over R, right? The masses go out, G over R. That should be length per time squared divided by length, that's per time squared, that works. Question. Yeah, so dx is equal to r d theta, so dx dt is r d theta dt, and so on. Okay?